the topic that we are going to discuss today is on cultivation method of parma rosa parma rosa that is symbopogon martinii is a species of grass in the lemon grass genus which is native to india and indochina but widely cultivated in many places for its aromatic oil other common names include indian geranium ginger grass and rosa or rosa grass it is a wild growing herbaceous green and straw colored grass with long slender stems terminal flower tops and fragrant grassy leaves it is harvested before the flowers appear and the highest yield is obtained when the grass is fully dried about one week after it has been cut parma rosa oil has a sweet floral with a hint of rose smell and is pale yellow in color with a nearly watery viscosity it belongs to the poaceae or graminae family and is very similar in appearance to both lemongrass and citronella which are close relatives of parma rosa now let's see about the origin of this parma rosa parma rosa is native to south east asia and has been used in medicine and also as effective insect repellent throughout this region for thousands of years parma rosa essential oil is obtained from a sweet lemon scented grass found growing wild throughout india especially to the northeast of bombay and towards the himalayan mountains Nepal and Pakistan Coming to geographic distribution Parma rosa is widely cultivated in many parts of the world including Turkey Russia USA Canada African countries European countries and Asian countries including India The plant grows wild in forests of Madhya Pradesh Maharashtra Andhra Pradesh Karnataka Uttar Pradesh and Orissa It is also found in lesser frequency in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and in some parts of Uttar Pradesh. There is now expansion in cultivated area which is spread over in the states of Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. Let's see the economic importance of Parma rosa. The essential oil of this plant which contains the active compound geraniol is valued for each scent and for a number of traditional medicinal and household uses it is anti nematodes and anti fungal and mosquito repellent it is used to counter physical and nervous exhaustion stress related problems and nervousness it cools the body of fever aids the digestive system clears intestinal infection relieving sore stiff muscles it moisturizes the skin balances the hydration levels and stimulates cell regeneration it balances production of sebum to keep the skin supple and elastic and is available for use with acne dermatitis preventing scarring rejuvenating and regenerating the skin as well as fighting minor skin infections the main chemical components of parma rosa oil are myrcene linalool geraniol geranil acetate dipentene and limonene parma rosa oil which has scent similar to roses is added to soaps and cosmetics used as a raw material for producing geraniol which is extensively used in perfumery industry now let's see the varieties of parma rosa Parma rosa that is Symbopogon martinii is one among 140 species of the genus Symbopogon and it has two cultivable varieties The first one is Symbopogon martinii variety Motia that is called as Parma rosa The second variety is Symbopogon martinii variety Sophia which is also called as ginger grass Symbopogon martinii variety Motia yields an essential oil with high geraniol content that is about 
60 to 90 percent, which is also called as East India geranium oil or Rusa oil. It has dark green leaves, which are leathery, prominently mid ribbed round this at the base and form an obtuse to right angle with the stem. Simbopogon martini variety Sophia, which is also called as ginger grass, is also grown widely in India and it yields oil of lower geranial content. Varieties like IW31243, IW31245, PRC1, Trishna, Tripta, Vaishnavi, Sim, Harsa have been released by different institutes in India. Motia, Sophia, Tripta, Trishna, PRC1, IW31245, IW3629, IW3244, OPD1, OPD2, RLLB77 are the popular varieties under cultivation. Now let's come to soil and climate requirement. Parma Rosa can be grown in poor sandy loam to heavy fertile soils. A well-drained loam soil with pH 6 to 7 is ideal. A rise in pH about 8.5 is found to decrease the plant growth and oil yield but has no adverse influence on the quality of oil produced. It is adapted to marginal areas and poor soils and can be grown under dense canopies of trees and used for soil conservation. Parma Rosa grows well in warm humid area with high temperature and plenty of sunshine during each growing period. The ideal elevation for each cultivation is up to 300 meters above mean sea level. Annual rainfall of 90 to 150 centimeters and a temperature of 15 to 35 degrees Celsius with ample sunshine is congenial for each cultivation. It is susceptible to frost and hence frost-prone areas are not suitable for its cultivation. Now let's discuss about the cultural practices of uh, Parma Rosa. First, let's see how land preparation is to be done. The field is ploughed to good tilt and organic manure is incorporated at the rate of 10 to 15 tons per hectare. Raised beds of 75 to 80 centimeter wide and of convenient length are formed with a spacing of 30 to 35 centimeter between beds. On sloppy terrain, the beds are formed along the contours. Now let's see about how planting and transplanting of this Parmorosa is done. The crop can be propagated by seeds and slips. Seeds are sown or seedlings are transplanted during the onset of monsoon, that is between June to August. Healthy and established seedlings or slips of 20 to 25 centimeter long are planted during the onset of monsoon, that is June end to August in rows of 30 to 60 cm apart with plants spaced at 30 to 60 cm within the rows. Planting may be done on ridges in areas receiving high rainfall to avoid water logging. Seedling or slips are planted firmly but not very deep into the soil. Transplanting is done usually in the evening hours to avoid transplantation shock. The plots are given light irrigation after transplanting. Gap filling should be done within 8 to 10 days of transplanting. It is advisable to plant two seedlings or slips per hill to avoid seedling mortality. Now let's come to irrigation methods. Water requirement depends upon the climatic conditions. The crop is highly sensitive to water logging where the plant becomes stunted and dies at a later stage and proper drainage should be provided to prevent water logging. In general, the field is to be irrigated 
10 to 15 days interval during summer. Mulches should be applied to conserve soil moisture and irrigation should be discontinued 7 to 10 days before harvesting. Now let's see about how manures and fertilizers are to be applied. Farmyard manure at the rate of 10 tons per hectare and NPK at the rate of 20, 50 and 40 kg per hectare are required as basal dose. Top dressing is done with nitrogen at the rate of 15 kg per hectare in three splits at three, six and nine months after planting. Application of zinc sulfate at the rate of 25 kg per hectare will increase the yield. Now let's discuss about weeding and after cultivation. Giving one to two weedings in the early stages and arting up after each harvest and top dressing would be beneficial. Distillation waste of this crop is applied as organic mulch at the rate of 3 tons per hectare and this is found effective for controlling weeds in the crop. Among herbicides, Duron at the rate of 1.5 kg AI per hectare and oxyfluorofen at the rate of 0.5 kg AI per hectare are effective for controlling the weeds. Now let's see about plant protection required for Parma Rosa. Parma Rosa is a hardy crop and is resistant to many pests. Pests and diseases problems should be managed by using botanical pesticides made from locally available resources or registered product from reputed manufacturer or institutions. Insect pest. Among many insect pests, aphids and thrips are the most common ones. Adults and nymphs of aphids gossipy suck sap from inflorescence. Adults and nymphs of these thrips damage young shoot tips, leaves and floral parts affecting the seed setting. Let's see the management part. This sucking insect and pest can be managed by spraying azadiractin 1% that is 10,000 ppm at the rate of 5 ml per liter water. The next dangerous insect is the white grub. Grubs feed on roots of Parmarosa and severe infestation occur during June to November months. For managing this insect, flooding with irrigation water kills the grubs. Termites Newly planted seedlings are more vulnerable and termites eat the fibrous roots leading to death of the plants. Management Flooding the soil with irrigation water is found to be effective. In severe cases, adding chloropyrifos 20 EC in irrigation water and using the flooding water is very effective. Let's come to diseases. Elicilla blight. This is one of the serious diseases which appears in epiphytic form during rainy season and causes considerable loss in production of leaves and essential oils. Let's see how to manage this uh, disease. The disease can be effectively managed by foliar spraying of Bordex mixture 1% at 15 days interval. The second disease is Carvularia blotch. This occurs in epiphytic form during August to October. Small eye sept orange or brick red necrotic lesions appear and coalesce together resulting in premature drying of the leaves. For managing this disease, fuller application of Bordex mixture 1% or Mancozev 0.3% at 15 days interval at initial stages of infection effectively controls the disease. Now let's come to the harvesting processes of this Parmarosa. The crop should be harvested in full flowering to seed production stage in order to obtain maximum and good quality oil. 
Harvesting is usually done with a sickle at 15 to 20 centimeter above the ground surface. Harvesting is also done in dry weather or during the hot hours of the day and not to harvest the crop when it is raining or early in the morning when there is dew on the ground. The number of harvest depends upon the climatic conditions of the place where it is grown. Generally, during the first year, only one harvesting can be done during October to November, whereas three to four harvests can be obtained during the subsequent years. The crop remains productive up to four to five years, depending upon the management practices followed. However, both harvest and oil yield start decreasing from the fourth year onwards. It is therefore recommended to keep the crop for only four to five years. Now let's see about the yielding capacity of Palma Rosa. Palma Rosa plantation remains productive for about eight years. However, the yield of the grass and oil starts decreasing from the fourth year onwards. Normally, 200 to 250 quintal per hectare of fresh herbage is obtained in first cutting and between 250 to 320 quintal per hectare in second and subsequent harvest up to three years under irrigated conditions. On an average, 200 kg of oil are received during the growing period of 15 to 16 months. The yield of oil for the first four years is as under. First year, 60 kg per hectare. Second year, 80 kg per hectare. The third year, 80 kg per hectare. And the fourth and the last year, 80 kg per hectare. Now let's come to the concluding part of the discussion. Parma rosa may be a lesser known medicinal and aromatic plant in India. However, as the demand for our aromatic industry is growing day by day, concerns are raising over the improved production and quality of raw materials used from the plant. Efforts to produce Parma rosa in large scale is possible with the use of advanced production technology available with the scientific community of the country. The growth of pharma and cosmetic industries in the country needs a big boost to generate employment opportunities through product-oriented processing. Let us join hands to grow more medicinal and aromatic plants for a bumper economic growth of India. Thank you.